Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. This is your host, Todd Durkin. And I want to first say happy Thanksgiving. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I know the last four days has been debauchery of food, not enough working out, not enough crushing the calories. So I hope you are getting in a calorie crushing workout as we speak. And what that means, you're walking, you're jogging, you're running, you're lifting weights. Uh, this is the last week of November. And uh, boy, oh boy, the holidays are upon us. So welcome to today's show. If it happens to be your first opportunity to listen to the impact show welcome we have had a lot of new listeners here in the month of november so uh, i want to say welcome to the family make sure you go visit the website toddurkin.com and make sure you share these episodes as a matter of fact today's episode is going to be a yet another epic episode i've got my wife melanie on the show today along with my uh, sidekick julie wilcox who's been 17 years 17 years at fitness quest 10 and tde and you're going to be hearing from her She's actually going to be hosting the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a guest on today's show, but I'm kicking this bad boy off. Why? Because the month of November has been Impact Month. An Impact Month based on uh, my Impact Foundation 2012 when Hurricane Sandy ravaged the Jersey Seashore and the Eastern Seaboard uh, is when I started my 501c3 Impact Foundation. And uh, a, sh a huge shout out to anyone who has participated in any of the events this past month. That includes the Impact Summit, which was from November 7th to the 14th. We had over 500 500 fitness pros participate in the Impact Summit. God bless all you trainers, coaches, and life transformers. Thank you. Thank you for all the donations. All of that goes back to the Impact Foundation so that we can give back to those in need. Also, uh, here recently, uh, November 20th, we had an epic epic impact day. Man, oh man, what a workout it was. Uh, we had an awesome group of people both work out and then we had the double impact amplified talk and I went deep and uh, if you were in the room that day, thank you for being in the room. It was awesome. But this essentially caps off Impact Month because as Thanksgiving wraps up, it's a great time for gratitude. And uh, as we go embark upon the holidays here, December I love December. December's all about making sure we get ready for a new year. Is anyone, anyone out there right now, I see y'all working around the neighborhood, you're, you're crushing it right now. Is anyone as excited as I am for 2022? If so, please yell, amen, amen, TD. I wanna hear you all the way on the East Coast. Amen, TD. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. Good, good. I hope you all are laughing and smiling right now because as we get ready to plan 2022, we've got some huge, I'm talking monumental things coming up in December. So uh, buckle up the bootstraps and be ready for what will be a very impactful December as well. But uh, before we get to December, this today is going to be a great impactful episode because I have my cohort, my sidekick, my my wife of 21 years coming up here, uh, Melanie Durkin on the uh, podcast today. And I can't wait. We're going to go deep on all aspects. I hope you're as fired up as me, but uh, I'm going to give up the captain's chair right now. Yep. I'm going to give up the captain's chair to uh, the one and the only Miss Julie Wilcox. Without further ado, let's get started with the Impact Show now. Todd, thank you so much. I am so excited to be back. And look, I'm in the captain's chair. Captain's <laughs> yeah. chair. Yeah, baby. Are you Boss guys ready lady. for this? <laughs> We're ready. Hey. Yeah, we're going to have fun. We're going to start with a little bit of fun. I don't want to just dive into these like the, these, the these deep hardcore ones. deep questions that we have going on. So we're going to start off with a little fun and and get it's so great having Mel back in the house though. I love it. I absolutely love oh, having her on too. the show. Oh, you're so sweet. We I'm trying to convince you know. her that we should have our own like couple show. Like, <laughs> oh, an, another podcast. It would just be like <laughs> The oh Melanie gosh. show. Like, no, no, no. And I got to give Melanie credit. She actually listens. She's become a huge podcast advocate. And every time I see her, she's working out. She's listening to podcasts. So you've come a I long listen way. to so many podcasts. And I, I listen it. to the Impact Show every single one. I learned that the last I time. Won. I didn't yes. know that until the last that. one. You yes. revealed that in, mm -hmm. I think it was the I last know. one we did. Of course. She did. Speaking well, of that, I mean, Mel's been on a few of our shows, right? Yes. Several. I've been on several. That's so exciting. It's always fun. Yeah. And in the new, the, the new fancy. 
new digs, digs baby. Yeah. yeah. So cool. And you know, it's it's so much fun having you back on the show this time of year because we're talking gratitude. We're, you know, we're just as Todd said, just wrapped up Thanksgiving and the impact event. And so it's so much fun just hearing from you um, and everything that you have to offer because oh, people love you. Thank They're you. They're always like, when's Mel I'm coming excited. back? It's November and it's our impact month. It's yeah. always like we hit record it's number a, of listeners when Melanie's do. on the show. Oh, it's like, like, who, who lives with that man? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that crazy? How does she do How does she that? deal with this crazy guy? How different are the they? energy. <laughs> um, but kind of before we, like I said, before we dive deep, I've got a couple um, kind of fun questions that came through on the social media. So okay. they're they're specifically for you, Melanie. Oh Ooh. my goodness! Yeah. Okay, fire away. Yeah, let's so see. I'm first, not allowed to. Yeah, I don't. I don't no, know these. No, I'm Todd, not you're not allowed to speak. Okay. On on these first three. So um, the first one I want to talk about is from James Welton, and James uh-huh. is getting married in four months. Okay. So he wants congratulations, to advice. congratulations, James. Yeah. So yes. his question is, what's the top advice for just beginning a marriage? Oh my goodness. The top advice for beginning a marriage, um, just support each other's dreams. You know, I mean, you're going to probably go in, in, it's a windy road, you know, a long marriage is going to be a windy road. So I feel like just being, um, supportive and, um, understanding and encouraging with both people, um, and not expecting things not to change. Things are going to change, but that's not a bad thing. Right. And hmm. I think I had no idea who I was marrying. No, I'm kidding. I did. Well, I that's did. not smart. No, no, no. I'm teasing. <laughs> you I'm better teasing. know who you're marrying. No, we were together for three years. So we knew each other really well. We had dated. I mean, that's a pretty long time to, to date before you get married. But when I look back at that, I can say I had no idea where our life was going to take us, mm-hmm. where I, I the had journey, you the just dream, a journey. Yeah. yeah. So much comes up that you don't expect. Right. And, and certainly that's not a bad thing. No, it's so a good thing. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing for sure. I need to answer this question. Can oh, I, can I, I okay, well, because can I was told, like I can't answer, minute. but like James oh. Welton, this is important from, from the, from the man perspective that I answer him because he's getting married. There's two things that, that you have to know. Yes, dear. Is always good. Yes, dear. James, listen, everyone. Enough, yes, enough yes, of dear. That. Yeah. Yes, dear no, 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 is the answer. That's a good thing. No, and the second thing is I do believe that faith is imperative uh, to get through the tough times and the windy roads. I think having a partner who is striving with you to grow faith together if and when you can pray together um, and you're going to grow a family today's day. You got to have faith. If you're, if, if one is new in faith, then grow in faith. Find a church, find a pastor, find someone who can help you grow. Find a small group where you can come together because listen, a relationship, let alone a marriage is hard enough to do it alone. Is really tough. This goes back to our, what was it before we got married? We had those meetings with the priest. The, what were those yes. called? Yeah, that what, was what, like our preparation. The, marriage whatever preparation they, the, the, marriage prep. Yeah. Yeah. It uh-huh. was about the triangle and you, you know, mm-hmm. you and your wife are at the bottom and it's always pointing to God. Right. And uh, I still remember that. That was yeah. probably the only thing I remember about those <laughs> preparation <laughs> meetings. And that's probably the most important thing. So yeah, James, yeah. there you got it. That's next question. Away. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay. The next one is Mike Abasco. Um, and this is for you, Melanie. And he's, asks, um, how's the Durkin household since Luke left? Is it a little bit less crazy? Dang, I can't answer that either. Oh, I know. You're going to want to, you're going to chime in on that one. It is different. It is, um, we're just, you know, we're, we're adapting. It was not easy to have him move across the country to the East Coast. Um, it was definitely very sad the first couple of weeks he was gone. And then we're, you know, we're adapting. We're getting used to it. Our dinners are different. Cause Luke is my gonna- Luke is my picky eater kid. And Brady and McKenna will eat anything. Mm-hmm. So we are just, we are living it up on the salads with, you know, we're I don't have to adjust any of my cooking. Um, so that's different. <laughs> and but Brady still eats us out of house and home. So people ask, is it less are you going through less food? Is is it less cooking? And I, I haven't really felt that because McKenna eats a lot, Brady eats a lot. Um, but it's, you know, his room's just there empty. It's oh. just, it's, you know, you walk by it and it's just, a, it's a massive adjustment. It definitely is. Now he's like the exciting family member that, you know, when he, when it, Luke's on the phone, Luke called and, you know, he's a celebrity. Like, in he's his our own celebrity. House. Yes, exactly. It's <laughs> like the, the exciting time to take a phone call. You know, from it's funny. Better a, yet, a FaceTime. As a parent, sometimes 
sometimes you, you feel like you're the only one going through this. And meanwhile, there's hundreds I of thousands like of people like that go through it. it's like this dirty secret <laughs> nobody talks about with right. like young, you know, I'm like, what the heck? Nobody, how come no one told how me? How come no one told me this was like the biggest heartbreak <laughs> ever? And, you know, right. I look at these younger families now and I'm like, oh, you just wait. You well, just truth wait. be told, as this, as this podcast airs, uh, I'm counting. We have five days left yeah, before yeah. he comes home. And he's going to be home for like five and a half, almost six weeks. Yeah. So super excited about yeah. that. And we'll probably be I'll, kicking end that, it back I'll end that question with this is one of the things that you, you want your kids, regardless of age, is you want them to be happy. And one of the cool things to see Luke right now is thriving academically, athletically. He loves the football program at Davidson. A great group of guys and coaching staff. And mm-hmm. like, that's all you want from, yeah. from your kids is you want to see them thriving in an environment where they can excel and grow and lead and learn. And uh, he, he's found that. So yeah, it's, it a, it's a set of, of extra helps. comfort. So good, mm-hmm. good question, Micah Bosco, oh, no. by yeah, the way. Why? Thank you. Yeah. And then next one. And Todd, you know this guy. This is our... Hooper, 31. Who? Yeah. 31. He's a police officer up in Vancouver, Canada. Nice. And this one really is for Mel mm. only. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> okay. All <laughs> right. We'll see if you chime All right. in. I, I, I feel like I <laughs> oh, owe no. them an answer, but okay. So Melanie? Funny. Melanie? We'll, we'll practice okay. this. God. So this is, yeah. It's weird Mel- being in the other seat, by the way. I'm, yeah. I'm uncomfortable right now. <laughs> hey, it's my show. This is good. Okay. Right. Um, um, Melanie, you have a solid guy as a husband mm-hmm. and a great relationship. What's one piece of advice you can give husbands out there to be better at? <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I won't answer this. Don't answer it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I might have to respond to whatever she I says though. I have to just like defend stick up myself. for himself, exactly. defend himself. Um, I think plugging in to the other side of, of what's going on, you know, I mean, he's a very uh, motivated, hardworking guy and sometimes, you know, needs to just dive in deep to whatever he's doing, but then, you know, like yesterday, Do, like yesterday, like does it have <laughs> like the awareness that there's like a million other things going on, and so just you know trying to balance, um, you know everything the the home life, the kid life, the um, personal life, the social life, you know just all yeah. that other stuff that maybe doesn't seem as important, but it is important too, you know. So I don't know. I think that nice. would be my my bit of nice. advice. And you do you have you go have your ups and downs with that. Sometimes you're kind of on the low end of that, and sometimes you're. Isn't that life? That's life. Yeah, it is life. Absolutely, for sure. I I will respond to that. Just say this to to anyone out there looking to improve their relationships. I love the book, The The Five Love Languages Mm -hmm. uh, by Mm -hmm. Gary Chapman. Um, We'll need to get Chapman on a show here in the future. But uh, I just love that because understanding each other's love languages is important to uh, basically lift your your partner up. Because one of the words of wisdom I'd I'd say, um, even to a guy like Welton starting out, is you've got to understand a relationship really isn't just about how can that person serve you. It's really how can you serve them. And when you understand Mm -hmm. what their love language is, then you can understand how you can better serve them. Melanie does a great job, and I'll tell you who um, is that. Uh, you know, she knows my my love language is words of affirmation, so she fills me up with words of affirmation, encouragement. I saw you working hard uh, on this or that, and that's all I need to feel like I'm fulfilled uh, on that side for my love language. So. Um, the Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman is a great resource we for any of you. We should have Gary on in February. Yeah, that would be love cool. That's oh, our goal. Valentine's like Day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll reach out I to love Gary. Love All right. It. Good. Yeah. good, good, good. That was a good ad, Todd. You're, I guess, a lot. It's, it's hard know. for me See, not to say I, anything. I, I would not. But it's a good resource. I had a better no, 100%. Yeah. In. And <laughs> speaking of resources, you guys just wrapped up a 21-day meditation program. We did. Pretty amazing. We did. That was fun. Yeah. And great, great feedback too Thank on that. You. That was, what yeah. What was, was uh, your favorite part? Um, you know what? I think the consistency of it. I mm. was, um, you know, hey, truth be told, I cannot listen to myself. So I, I listened to them <sighs> You're so good, when they though. were um, being created. I would go back and listen to it and, you know, kind of redo it if yeah. I needed to or whatever. But then I couldn't actually go in real time. I don't know. I just, it's, and you say the same thing about yourself with, with podcasts and stuff. So it, it's a different experience, but I enjoyed um, uh, creating them and thinking about them mm. and doing them a along with everybody else for 21 days. 
And, um, I, you know, it feels good to try to spread that um, skill or just get people a little bit Practice. more comfortable, yeah. you know, and just just um, just educate, teach people about it doesn't take long and it's it doesn't have to be complicated. And so it was definitely satisfying to um, to, you know, try to turn more people on to meditation because yeah. I definitely am a big believer in yeah. it. Yeah, I yeah. think the next one we so do, good. you'll do 90 percent of them. I'll do 10 <laughs> percent. Uh, great feedback. If you again, if you didn't listen to the 21 days of meditation, one of the things I have found is that most people want to do more, quote, meditation, more prayer time, mm -hmm. more time in silence. But to have a guided meditation really helps um, yeah. bring you to the practice of meditation. And the feedback was great on the number of people who increased their meditation and prayer practice for these 21 days. Um, and having Melanie, so y'all know, uh, not only has she been a college professor for 23 years uh, here in San Diego, but as someone who's been next to me by my side at Fitness Quest 10 in the Pilates and yoga and meditation side of things here, uh, um, she's, it's one of the things that she does best is the meditation and the breath work and, um, uh, the feedback was just unbelievable. So if you have not listened to that yet, I highly recommend going back and listen to the 21 days of meditation. You can always go to the website, just the toddurkin.com site and, um, and, and you'll find it there. But, uh, oh, good. You housed them all there. For, I, I, I'll have to I believe the team, I believe the team. I, I think I Julie was spearheading that. that. Yes. All right. Yep, I like yep, it. Yep. I like yeah. it. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Okay. We're going to get a little bit deep here. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we here go. Here we go. So here's, we've got some questions. We're, we're talking uh, gratitude, legacy, um, all kinds of fun things here. But I want to talk about the foundation just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So after nine years of dedicating your time, energy, money, um, creating the fundraising and all of that. I mean, Todd, you're such a big part of that. And we always do the, the day of impact, which we just wrapped up here. Do you have a few of your most memorable stories that you want to share on um, how you've impacted people or maybe your favorite impact day that we actually hosted mm. here? Ladies before gentlemen. <gasps> Oh my gosh, do you remember that impact day was pouring rain? What? That was oh, awesome. The what best year Under was that? Armour truck, TRX oh, truck. Gosh. It was pouring, pouring rain. Ooh, pouring rain. Dogs. It was the best one. Yeah, I still remember we Andy packed. Anderson was filming yes. filming it. It was epic. Was it was supposed to be at Roadrunner Sports. And I made a decision at 6 a.m. Yeah. There was no way we're doing outside. And we had about... 100 people in inside Fitness Quest 10. And I went to Roadrunner. Doing in oh, the that rain. was like literally I was like, like I didn't get the back. back. That was, that was like so eight crazy. years ago or it was probably, seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. that yeah, was yeah. that was, was a fun on. memory. Yes. Was that is that one of the ones that you want to That play? was an, a very memorable. I mean, there was a it lot was of stress around it. There yeah. was a lot of craziness, but it was also just so cool the way we pulled it off. Oh, totally. I remember and it that it worked inside that we had so many people um, I just an ongoing every year we get applications from kids, from seniors all across the country, a, a significant so amount amazing. from Scripps Ranch, actually Scripps Ranch High School. But then we, we do our at large, um, scholarship as well. And reading those applications is so, you know, it's been kind of funny because I've been reading them for nine years and then, you know, I, I had little kids, young mm. kids. Mm. And, and they're so impressive. They're so detailed. You get to know these kids like you, you know, you, you never have before. And what was so cool about this year was now it turned into these kids that I, I've known since they were in kindergarten. They were oh. in Luke's class. They were his classmates, oh some of them, yeah. you know, and even if they weren't friends, I knew the yeah. name. I've watched them yeah. or see, I know them and from some social are clients media. Too. Yeah, it's clients, so kids. And so it's sort yeah. of just cool to see them putting together their responses and their essays and just doing such a good job. And you, you know, you see how mm -hmm. darn hard they've worked yeah. and how much they've excelled in school and sports. So that is very satisfying and enjoyable. Yeah, I don't, I I don't know. It what, too. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. I, I always one find of my favorites. that. Yeah. When I'm reading those, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm like, how do these kids know yeah. where they want to go and what right. they want to do? It's like, they're right. just so inspiring. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's awesome. We have a big old stack of them too. I mean, it's yeah. homework. It I is. mean, I'm used to grading on, Obviously, with teaching all my classes, but all hours of the yeah, day. you get a big old yeah. stack, and you're like, "All right, let's do this." <laughs> oh, that's awesome, but it's good. Yeah, I call it the stack of impact because, as y'all know, I like 
to accumulate piles. I don't like to throw <laughs> things away. So I have piles of applications going back to 2012. And Melanie's well, like- thinks he does. <laughs> and she'll toss stuff. And I'm like, wait, that's my stack of impact no right there. We no longer need these. But uh, what I would say on this is, and again, for anyone new to the show, um, so you know, uh, as a man of impact, uh, in, in 2012, when Hurricane Sandy crushed the Jersey Shore, where I'm from, Brick, New Jersey, Point Pleasant, Bayhead, Manilokan, Seaside, Tom's River, Point Pleasant, Brick was annihilated. And I remember sitting here with Melanie and, and the young kids at the time in 2012 thinking, what do I do? Like, what can I do? Phone lines were down. You couldn't connect with your family. Uh, and I have five sisters and two brothers. And, and it was a very, um, just a very uh, uncertain time of how do I help? And what can we do? And it was in that time that we created the Impact Foundation because it was always an intention of ours to create a, a nonprofit 501c3 to give back, hopefully someday, millions of dollars. In that time, that really uh, struck a, a, a spark uh, in, in us and in me about giving back. And um, I think when you say, you know, what are a few of the memorable things? Number one, starting it was really powerful. And sometimes I think of how did you go from a disaster to a destiny, like a disaster of this was something that it was a bad thing. And it became what will I hopefully believe will be where we can make significant impact in the universe because of this. You don't see that when you're going through it, but starting it was important. The second thing I'd say is in that time, I remember we actually partnered with the Breeze Dream Foundation and uh, we raised $75,000 in a matter of months. I put a, a summit on, I just talked about earlier on how we did an impact summit here recently, but back in 2012, I gathered other fit pros and we, we um, actually actually a uh, partner with the Breeze Dream Foundation that's Drew and Brittany Breeze's foundation and uh, raised this money and gave all of that money back. One of the, the, the families that we gave back to uh, unfortunately was a man who lost his life in the aftermath, in the cleanup of Hurricane Sandy. Uh, his name was Vern Hankins. And Vern Hankins, as he was cutting down a tree um, from the, the hurricane, uh, uh, crushed the tree in, uh, on his yard, he actually um, was killed in a, a tragic accident from that. Vern Hankins also, uh, he was my, my middle school and high school basketball coach. And, um, you know, this guy was great. I love that guy. And he was a great coach. And, um, you know, not that the check is going to bring back a life, um, but that check to the Hankins family was special because here I was, a, a young boy in middle school getting coached in basketball by, by Coach Hankins. He he looked like the great American hero. Remember that show, the great American <laughs> hero, anybody? Um and then in high school was the JV coach and helped the, uh, the, uh, the varsity. But man, giving checks sometimes to, to families in need, cause we don't just scholarship student athletes in need. It's families in need and individuals in need and people who are killed and can't afford a funeral. To me, that's the impact. That's the stuff that like when you hear a story of, of someone who's going through hell and back and, and, um, because of the people who have given and donated to the foundation, we then are able to pay it forward through the foundation. And then the last one I would say would just be, um, it's the everyday, uh, boys and girls or young men and women who come in. Um, we have, every year scholarships, not just to San Diego student athletes, but to Brick, New Jersey, as well as at large student athletes. As you're listening to this now in November, December here of the year, know that um, in the spring of every year, we will put out applications for anyone around the country that if you know a senior who will be going to college and is in need, uh, in financial need beyond what college may pay, um, part of what the Durkin Impact Foundation does is give give back to those student athletes who are in need and are committed to going and furthering their education so they could go be men and women who are going to create impact in the universe as well. Mm, powerful. You know, in the last nine years, you know, it's a lot of work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, a lot on everyone's part, your part. Um, you know, we have a ton of fun here at the gym and, and there's a lot of people that contribute to that. What are, what are some things that you feel are really important um, that you've learned about running a foundation? Mm. 
I'll start and then Melody can fill in. Number one, <laughs> it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. And uh, again, I always say 100% of, of the proceeds of any donation go back to charity. Uh, we don't draw salary from the foundation. Um, I sometimes wish that I could do it like full time <laughs> um, and and raise money and give back to, to just all the families and people who need it. But it, to do it right, it takes time. And it's not just a November thing every year and, and end of the year. Sometimes we get some checks from people at the end of the year who, who would like a, a, um, a tax deductible gift. Uh, that's awesome. But it is a year round effort and we have a lot of things going on in November, December. Um, also, another lesson I would say is it, it's always better to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you've ever received a gift. I, I don't like receiving gifts as much as I like giving gifts. Sometimes it's, it's actually uncomfortable, uncomfortable exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. Of, yeah. of that. It's a lesson is, God, it feels Especially great you when you older. give a check. I I, I, yeah, I just, I guess, yeah, depending on what anything. season of life you're in. <laughs> but I, I love giving, but it's yeah. it's hard sometimes to receive. And some of these these checks that we give are, 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 are for really monumental types of events that people yeah. have been through some mm -hmm. tragedies. And then I guess the last lesson you asked for two or three, I guess it's the feeling like it's never enough. You know, it's like, there's so much more to be done. There's so much people out there who are hurting. And I, I wish, I wish we could do more. Um, again, the foundation fortunately has raised, um, over uh, a quarter million dollars in, in our nine years. And the goal is to raise, uh, $500,000 here in the next two years. And then beyond that in the millions, but, it just there's so much more to be done and impact to be created. And I hope that um, through this podcast and through our social media and through our platforms and through our live events in that, um, you know, I, 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 we've got some things coming up here in actually a few weeks where we're actually uh, part of the proceeds are going to be toward the impact foundation. So it's really just a matter of focusing on servanthood and, and, and how can we give back? I think there's just so much more to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, after I'm at, kind of the end of my teaching career. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm definitely looking to see what's around the corner and how I'm going to reinvent myself and hmm. in the next five years. And, uh, and this is definitely going to, th this requires so much time and attention and, um, there's so much work to be done that this is definitely part of my reinventing my, I myself professionally, that. which is exciting to me because yeah. it is, um, it is an area that, that I feel like we could just continue to grow and, and oh, do yeah. so much more. I mean, I feel like we're doing a lot with it, but we could certainly do so much more. So, um, so it is, it just all adds up. Sometimes it feels like it's just a drop in the bucket with, yeah. you know, it's serving people and satisfying their needs, but it, it all adds up. So, yeah, so true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. exciting, Mel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's mm -hmm. that's very, very cool. Um, you're both leaders, you know, and you often talk about as a parent, you must lead. Um, what aspect of your children's lives um, has been the most challenging for you as a parent individually and collectively? You go ahead, Mel. <laughs> you take that one. I know. Um, gosh. Well, uh, first of all, you just uh, do your best and mm. probably make a bunch of mistakes along the way, right? And hope they're not too big. Um, I think just being a good role model um, for, you know, for just being um, kind and um, and and leading a healthy life and, and you know, faith-based and, you know, having them see me pray and see me take care of myself and, and, you know, hold tight to my friends and family, you know, just, just role modeling what you want to be teaching. It's not always easy, but I, they definitely watch what you do more than listen to what you say. And, um, so I know that, and I, I'm conscious of, making sure I'm not just preachy, preachy, preachy and not practicing it and, mm. and not doing it in my own life. Um, so, and I think both of us, you know, try to do a pretty good job with that um, as much as we can. And, you know, they're also do, you could have five kids in there on five, they're different in five different ways. You got 10 kids and they're mm -hmm. different in 10 different ways. And our three kids are different in, you know, three different ways. And it's just, you, you have to, to adjust, you know, with your parenting tactics and your hmm. expectations and your conversations. And, you know, they're just all so unique. Yeah. Um, and I feel, you know, super fortunate mm. that they're 
they're smart and they're healthy and they're, you know, they're, mm. they're motivated and yeah, but yeah. it's not easy. No, 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 <laughs> no, it's not easy. <laughs> Y'all are laughing at me. If, or not. If no. anything looks easy, uh, that's completely not well, true. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the Bible says grow up a child in the way he should go. And when he grows old, he will not depart. And I often think of that as because my main role is I don't own my kids. Mm -hmm. We don't own our kids. God owns our kids. And how can we do a better job imparting faith in them so that when they face the decisions they're now facing as an 18 year old man here soon, or no, 19 soon, 19 here soon. in t 10, mm -hmm. soon, um, on the 10th of December, uh, uh, what, 16 and 13, um, they're making some very important life decisions. And mm -hmm. some of these decisions could really impact their life. Um, in, in you make a bad decision, one bad decision could really cost you. So I'm constantly thinking about, am I, am I modeling the behavior right? Am I doing the right things? It's, it's not do as I say, it's do as I do. And I'm hoping that as a, a 13 year old girl would watch me and, and as she makes decisions with her, her life, heck, it's not easy being in a middle school girl. Uh, it's not easy being, or boy for that matter. It's not easy being in high school these days with the amount of peer pressure and, and mm -hmm. social media and the phones, my gosh, the phones. Um, I sometimes think, how much does an iPhone cost? 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, I don't know, whatever it costs mm -hmm. is like, sometimes I think, would it be a, a if I just smashed an iPhone, <laughs> would it be like a really good investment to like, a sorry, sorry, I just lost my cool. You don't have a phone for the next month. And then, you know, is it worth, is it worth the fight? Y'all are laughing at me because y'all know it's true. Can I get an amen to that? Um, but but seriously, um, I think about how can we create more wow moments? How can we have moments um, that, seeing about this on my, my walk this morning, honestly, is, man, like pretty soon when Brady goes to college and then McKenna, it's a different season of life. And then it's you and I and our kids are grown up. And it's like, I, I remember when these kids were, were, were young, yeah, young kids and it's like different seasons. How do you slow time down? Mm -hmm. How do you slow it down so that we can really, even now as, as we get ready for a family vacay at the end of December is literally just slow time down. And, and I'll end it with this. Uh, as far as this thought is concerned, when they were kids, we started our, our mantra. And if you've ever listened to a previous episode before, whether it be 160 on the 10 lessons in 20 years, or I think there was 136 and 137 episodes, you can go back in those, is I talked about a mantra that we created when Luke was just born. And I don't know where I got it from, but I'm like, I'm going to start something. We're going to say it uh, every night. And it was at the time, uh, we're the Durkins. We always give, do our best and we never give up. So Mel and I would say that to the kids. Um, and they would then rhetorically say the same thing back. Um, you know, uh, when you say that, we always do our best and we never give up. I'm not sure when that is going to be applicable, but always doing our best is an everyday thing and never giving up is not an option. Um, so when you face the tough times is how do you do it? So young parents out there, old parents out there is think about what is your family mantra? And by the way, it could be updated as well. So think about that and have a prayer, have a mantra, have a meditation, something that you wrap your, your, your voice around so that you can um, lead your kids the way they need to be led. Mm. So powerful. And, you know, I've known you guys for a while now. A few I think. years. <laughs> <laughs> Luke was just a baby when I first met you guys. Mm. And mm. to see the progress and to see them grow and to see who they are today is amazing because they really are incredible, incredible oh, human you. beings. And it's because of you guys and you're such great parents. So thank you. So yeah, sweet. I, thank I mean you so that. Much. mean that so much. It, it's so true. Um, okay. So here's another one. Um, the last year has been tough for a lot of people, and it could have been because of COVID. Um, that's actually the last two years. Um, you guys have been working a lot more together on certain projects. You did the Get Yoked program. You did the 21 Days of Meditation. Um, what do you feel um, teaching together, merging together your talents um, was it necessity or was it on how you're planning to continue to collaborate together in the future? You know, it was, it was a 
funny experience. I mean, that's how we started. We met in graduate school. We were both she was teaching, hitting on me. She was teaching. hitting on me. We were college, <laughs> you know, part time college instructors teaching PE classes at San Diego State. And then we were working in gyms and we were both, you know, personal trainers. I was a group exercise instructor. And so we started way back when we first were together teaching together. I mean, we used to teach together at the Hilton. We would do um, classes and and, mm. and workouts and boot camps and stuff. And so, and then we had to, you know, we had to kind of, uh, I, I call it divide and conquer. You know, it was <laughs> right. sort of like I I went my way. I stayed in the, the education side of things at Southwestern College and continued with that. And Todd took over Fitness Quest 10 and I had you know, the kids. And so we just, we were parallel, mm -hmm. right? We were kind of always parallel, but, but on different roads and different responsibilities and, and having different days, which I think has always actually been pretty helpful that I, that we had that separate, but very similar, you know, kind of professional lives. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, I, I think it was fun the way it came full circle as soon as, COVID hit and shut down everything. Yeah. I mean, Fitness Quest 10 shut down on uh, on March, I think it was 15th, and Southwestern College shut down March 13th. Maybe South, maybe Fitness Quest 10 was like March 16th. It was right before mm -hmm. um, St. Patrick's Day. And, uh, you know, we're all home at the house, and we start teaching together. We start filming workouts together to put, you know, to keep Fitness Quest 10 going. And, you know, I'm Zooming with my college students. And it just was a – it was a kind of a crazy full circle moment. And it was um, – I, I think I always assumed it would come back that way, that when I retired from my teaching job, um, I would start to travel a little bit more and have more, mm. you know um, – flexibility with my schedule. The kids are older that we would start to collaborate a little bit more and put some new programs together, teach together. So it came a little bit earlier than I thought, but I think definitely it was, it was a good foreshadowing of it what's, was fun watching you what's guys. coming yeah, up. Yeah. So we, much had fun. Fun. we definitely had fun with it. Oh, and yeah. then getting the kids involved with the get yoke. That was, that was a blast. That was, that was interesting. Yeah. You said, was it necessity or not? I would just say this is I love, I love, I love spending time with Melanie. So Aww. it's been, it was, it's been it really, a, it's really, it a it's one. really been a blast. And I don't want to be one of these couples that once the kids are all grown up, you're like, uh, who are you? Mm -hmm. um, like right. we've been, we've had our careers and quote success or whatever. And now we've got to um, rediscover each other. I actually love, um, spending time with Melanie and, and it, whether that be us going for a walk or working out together or teaching together, the more time I get with her, um, she makes me better. And, and I mean that when she's teaching, I marvel at, at that. Not enough people know how great of a teacher Melanie is, uh, both training and, and group exercise. I, I, I don't know, uh, another group exercise instructor that has the skill, talent, and energy that Melanie has the ability to 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 teach a class in, and I've learned a lot. And people don't know I've that. been doing it for so long. No, but <laughs> I but joke around. I could do it. In people a would say that <laughs> I think because of social media, people think that that's me. But uh, I don't for, teach from on you, social media. <laughs> if you ever see Melanie teach, she's a masterful, oh, masterful oh, teacher. Funny. And um, no, I'm it's serious. The truth. It is true. It's so I love it. I, I just lo I, I love that, and I hope that um, you know, moving forward for the next 50 years, we do a lot more uh, things together. And I have you in might my have to degree. get into like Tai Chi you, or you guys, something. Right? Like, 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 meditation, like, meditation, yeah, meditation. Yeah, that's our future. Right? We need to I, start I not the Todd Mel podcast show, but the Todd <laughs> Melanie yeah. workout. Jack, yeah. Jack, Come Jack on. Delane, Jack, Delane, Delane, yeah. Delane, right? Oh my goodness. My heroes. My heroes. Yeah. That would be so awesome. Get rid of the Food Network. Let's get into the <laughs> fitness workouts on TV. I love it. I love it. Um, that kind of follows up with the next question is you've both been teachers, coaches, mentors, counselors um, in a variety of organizations, brands, businesses, and most importantly, people. Um, is there a similar thread that is common to all of these roles? And if so, what's that thread? Um. You know, what is it? Pastor Miles always says this, find your, um, 
your strengths. You know, there's that strength test, mm. that strength test. You strength and I'm, I'm a teacher to my core. I, I, you know, I just, my personality. So I was fortunate to, to find that profession. I found it late. I was in my late twenties by the time I figured out I should be a teacher. And then I figured out also what, uh, um, grade I wanted to teach. I never mm. was really attracted to teaching, you know, kids in elementary mm. school and high school. That was never appealing to me. But when I started to teach at the college level, it was just like a perfect fit. Um, and I didn't find that out until I was about 28. So, but I've been doing it for a really long time and it genuinely fulfills me. It's mm. genuinely satisfies just what I was kind of born to do is encourage and teach and guide and and be a mentor and help people figure out, you know, what they should do and how, you know, to um, to to have a, a, a healthy, good life. And I, I teach fitness and wellness and nutrition. And so, you know, that's I definitely um, do practice what I preach with all of that. And it's just very um, comfortable. It's mm. just who I am. So I think that that is helpful. I'm not like trying to force anything, you know? Right. Um, and I, I feel the same way I could answer for you, but you, I have said this, people will ask me how you kind of go so hard, Todd, with like, you know, he's got so many different things right. going and he works a lot and he's just, you know, he's, even with his social media, like he's nonstop. I, I have a really weird relationship with social media. I have fun with it sometimes and then I hate it <laughs> and I don't look at it. I don't, I don't, I'm like, oh, way. I'm so out of it. I haven't <laughs> even looked at it in a week. I just have this weird relationship with it and you are so genuinely entertained <laughs> by it and so genuinely like i i marvel at it but i think that <laughs> it is that you really truly are so genuine you on social media and you you know at fitness quest 10 mm -hmm. and leading people and so it's just who you are you're not being anything different. He's not trying to be anything He's different. not trying yeah. to be, yeah, I think so sometimes true. people on social yeah. media are trying to have a presence and trying to, you know, work on their brand and trying to, trying, trying. Or and, trying to figure out what Or other trying to figure want. it out. And yeah. then, and it's just hard. It's hard to yeah. do that nonstop 24 seven. And he can just do it because he's just like, he just loves it. He just has fun with it all the time. But so it feeds my love language. It, it does, because yeah. yeah. I actually marvel at the ability to connect with people worldwide. Right. I'm talking you Europe, too. Australia, hmm. US, yeah. Canada, South America. I'm connecting with people. I don't even look at my DMs. I have people DMing oh, me. Yeah. I don't even look at So they can't DM it. you. They, they Well, your friends will DM me. And I'm like, I'll, then I'll go to it. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Wait till I after the show. Uh, two weeks like, no. ago. I just am like, I'm so bad. I, yeah, I will say this as far as the question is concerned. I do think people put too many, uh, too much in the titles and roles that you play. Like I'm a trainer, I'm a coach and an author. And like, listen, it's not about what you do. It's not about the accolades. It's not about successes. It's really about who you are. It's about who you are. So, you know, if there's a common thread, it's not about a title. And, and, and I hope you can understand what I'm saying here is when you look at why do you do what you do, whatever your career is, whatever industry it is, why do you do what you do? Years ago, when I had no idea how to run a business, it was like, I just want to help people. I want to serve people. I want to help people. I want to help people. I, I still do that. I have seven roles practically that I, I wear and it really doesn't matter. They're not, they're not periods after each one. There's commas. And I think when you put commas after that, it doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter about what achievements you've had. I'm not defined by that, uh, because I'm a, I'm an owner or I'm a manager or I'm this or that. No, it's what's my role? What's my mission? And if we can focus on the mission of what you do and why you love doing it, it takes away a lot of the anxiety of the busyness and the stress and the angst of all these different roles. And, and that it's like, Hey, I was just reminding someone today, by the way, in the DM <laughs> of, <laughs> Uh, remember, our DMs. remember I'm too busy for the this, DMs. Is, this is a, a very <laughs> high profile college strength coach <laughs> who right. who I reminded him, focus on changing these men's lives. That's it. Reminding him. That's what you got to do. Don't worry about all the other stuff of, you know, are you going to have a job at the end of the year? Are you going to get a contract extension? Are you, right. a, focus on changing lives. And I believe that God, when you serve your purpose, is going to take care of you. And if you get, if you get wrapped up in, in the titles, that puts your identity and your ego in a place that's very dangerous. That could be taken See, away. You're so like, you're so 
deep with your ability because that's a very difficult thing for it people is. to do. Yeah. And it also, you know, it it, it's, it's hard to describe and people that I don't know or don't know me will say, what does your husband do? I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how to answer that. What does my husband what do? What doesn't he know? Um, what doesn't he, he do? And I remember Luke filling out an application. He's like, mom, what do I say for dad, dad. does? Life is he, transformer. Is he a personal Period. trainer? I'm like, personal trainer. I don't even know what your dad does. <laughs> I hate to so much. Well, I once said, I, I, and I should do I don't know what his initials. role is. T-D, T-E-W-I-D. Too I difficult know. to explain what I do. It, it is. It, you Dude. are you are too difficult but, to but explain. But why do people feel like they have I to know. actually define, I hey, I'm a know. trainer or I'm a coach or I'm yeah. a business owner. It's very we, progressive it's, of you. I'm very Well, impressed. no, but that's what happens is, <laughs> well, unfortunately, I me mean, get a little deeper, it becomes part of ego. And the mm -hmm. ego is a dangerous thing. Um, so I believe that the common thread here for me, it's about, I'm going to bring it all back to where it is, is faith. It's, mm -hmm. am I serving God's purpose? It doesn't matter if I'm writing a book or if I'm doing a social media post or I'm training somebody. Now, if I get wrapped up in the, oh, what are they going to think if I'm a trainer or I'm, a, I'm an author or I'm a speaker? Or, am I serving God's purpose? End of the day, if that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm called to do, that's all that matters. So no, hey, the common you're thread. Doing a good job. The I'm common saying, thread is is that you got that down. You it's do. just not easy. I, I, yeah. I don't know if I have a down. It's what I'm. I no, constantly I remind myself. But it's what I remind myself of because get, listen, for any of us, especially as guys, ego is a tricky thing. And if we place mm -hmm. our our identity in our in our successes, listen. It could be it could be taken away in an instant, no, that's and true, and sure. that's a dangerous thing because all of a sudden you 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 feel empty, you feel mm -hmm. lost, you feel stolen, you feel like you're you're uncertain, you you don't know, and then you place it in in, in your self worth in in how much money you're making or how much this or that, and that's that's not the right place where we should be focusing on because I believe that if we come at a place of how can I serve best, meaning you know mm -hmm. how can you. Uh, you know, serve best, then I believe that when you're, you're tuned in on that, then all of a sudden you find what we all search for. We're all seeking more peace. We're all seeking more fulfillment. We're all seeking more joy. We're all seeking more impact, but you've got to really yeah, focus on that. If you're too that. focused on one role or, you know, you, or the wrong role. You're the wrong role, yeah. and then you lose your job, and then who am I? And yeah, so, I, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a it dangerous thing. Can it's be. a dangerous thing, and, and any of us, any mm -hmm. of us, myself including, are susceptible to that. Right. And it's a reason why, again, common thread, faith comes mm -hmm. back to who am I serving? Not who am I serving, whom am I serving? Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, this one's perfect to follow that. Mm. Yes. Um, Todd, this one is more specific to you, but many people have characterized you as the light force across all aspects of life, mind, body, and soul. I heard you mm. say at some juncture that mm. you want to be a light force for people and that they should be the same for other people that they turn to, lead, mm. serve, inspire. How does being the light impact one's life and the life of others? I'm hearing a lot of light. <laughs> I'm not sure what you just said, except I, I, got, really, I, I got confused. I lost her. I'm course. confused, people. Oh my but, God, you uh, answer uh, that question. I'm okay, well, I, I, I'll just say this. Um, she's during the pandemic, I talked about being a lighthouse, being a mm. lighthouse. And um, I'm not sure on the light force thing other than this is when I talk about a lighthouse, um, I'm saying get lit up on the inside. I think hearing me talk about a life force is the only way to be a force of nature, to be a force of God is to be lit up from the inside out. Uh, Pastor Jeremiah uh, talked about that. He said once that you train me from the inside out. That was the greatest compliment that a client has ever mm, given me so is, awesome. is so, train yeah, me from yeah. the inside out because people come in and they want to lose 20 pounds of, of body fat or they, they have an ache or a pain. All of that is bodily. But if you can truly uh, change someone from the inside out, inside, by the way, is body, mind, and soul, then I believe you're doing your job as a life transformer. So a, a life force, 
I guess would just be getting lit up from the inside out. And that takes work. That takes diligence. That takes practice. That takes communication with the people who are in your life. That takes discipline and habits and the things I preach all the time here on this podcast, in my books, in my planner, all the stuff that that I do. And the hardest part is doing it. It's the discipline to do it uh, over and over again. So I guess I would just answer that by saying, get lit up from the inside out. Make sure you're you not only listening to this podcast, go share it with your family. Sh- like mm-hmm. h- Share this this podcast episode with your family. Share it with your colleagues, your coworkers, the people who are in your life. Um, not only is it helping uh, put more light into the world, it's going to then hold you accountable saying, hey, here's what I'm about. This is what I'm going to do to to be lit up from the inside as well. Mm. Well, and I think you're really good about seeking light and seeking out people who who make you feel good and and um, bring out the best in you. And I think both of us I, actually I, do, and that's important. I would say this: I, more than better at finding people who are lit up from the inside out, I'm probably better at not letting people who are not lit up. Well, in. exactly, exactly. I, that, I, I, that's that's kind of that, that's yeah, one of my I, it a I, bit. Yeah. I, I, energy vampires, and I don't get along mm-hmm. very well. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, and I can sense them. Um, so uh, yes, but I, I, I um, there's a lot of there's a lot of dark forces out there today. So I like to serve them, but I'm very careful of energy too. Yeah, but you you know it's so interesting because you actually your energy is so infectious. So you mm-hmm. people so it attracts are the so right people you that you want around. Right, yeah, and yeah, just, you sort of like a yeah, magnet, especially exactly. here at Fitness Quest Ten. Yeah, um, no. Well, that's one of the best things about the podcast is I'm connected now with people literally all over the world Mm -hmm. and not just Fitness Quest 10 because for 20, almost 22 years here, come January 2022, it'll be 22 years, is um, since 2017, 2018, and I've wanted to expand uh, our messaging and what I'm about. And Mm -hmm. God was calling me to do that. That one of the great things about the podcast, it's allowed uh, mm-hmm. me and us to reach more people. Mm-hmm. And I love, by the way, so y'all know as you're listening in, whether, where you, whether you live local or you live like across the planet, I love hearing from you. I read all the DMs. I read all the emails. <laughs> of course he I does. read them. No, because <laughs> I, does. I, I really love, does. I do because <laughs> I love the feedback and it's probably dangerous because sometimes you get on this rabbit hole, but sure. when someone pours out their life <laughs> to me and says that, a certain episode changed their life. Mm. I'm filled up for the day. I could have yeah, five yeah. bad things happen a day and I get an email or a DM saying, yo, TD, I'm having a problem in my marriage or this or that, or I'm stuck or I'm, I'm putting my self-worth in my job and I'm, da, 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 da. and I'm like, boom, you had a trigger. That's an aha moment. Bam. That's the purpose of the podcast. That's why we mm. do what we do. Now I'm getting a little fired up. Right, there we go. Going. Keep going. Fired up for you. Fired up. It is. No. Wow. Okay. Mel, it's your turn. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your your yoga practice and your meditation and and uh, you've been doing it for so long. And again, we're just wrapping up, you know, uh, right. uh, 21 days of meditation and everything we got to see you on camera during COVID and all that good stuff. But if there's advice that you would give to someone just starting out in their practice, um, what would that advice be? What healthy habits um, mm. do you think that um, they would need to offer? I know. I honestly, I... I wish I had started earlier because when I was I, from mm. 20 to 30, I was running a ton, many, many miles a week, doing kickboxing and high impact and weights. Oh, and so there was no, step aerobics. no yeah. step aerobics yeah. and stair climbing. There was no yin to my yang. There, I was just all high impact uh, kinds of exercise, I honestly, probably through into my mid thirties even. And obviously it, you know, it takes injuries, it takes mm-hmm. aging, it takes, you know, just your life changing, you know, pregnancies, rehab, <laughs> different things to, um, you know, kind of uh, slow you down in certain ways, but then, you know, open up other doors. So I honestly don't, I, I feel like I'm, I'm not that, that I haven't been doing yoga that long. I think it's been about 10 or 15 years. It should be much longer than that, but it's, um, it's definitely filled a place, um, in my life that just, it just feels good. It just feels right. And, you know, whether it's my 
aging body and my, you know, chaotic life at times and, you know, being busy and stuff. Um, I, you know, will tell my students that, you know, the, the whole entire world mm. should do yoga. And oh, I do yeah. truly believe that we would be a happier, better place. And I it doesn't take Todd's a lot. even said that he yeah, wants like, more I yoga think in everybody his should be need, like, um, you more. know, you, you have a baby and leave the hospital and you get your, you know, <laughs> recommendation. Um, and, and I feel like I've been a little bit, you know, I, I've been meditating now, I think 10 years. So I don't mm. think that's that long really, but I started in my forties and, um, and it definitely is, is going to be my future. You know, I, I see that I will continue that for a long time. Hmm. And I think people starting out just need to start with small steps, find a teacher that they like. If they hate the first three or four yoga classes that they do, hmm. they just did the Keep, wrong ones. Yeah. You know, you just had the wrong teacher. There's so many yeah. Different. There's just so many yeah. different styles yeah. and so many different types of studios. And you just have to find a good fit for your personality and where you're at in your life. Are you injured and broken down? Are you looking for, you know, more of a fitness type or, or more really more Zen? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I, I think you just don't give up on searching for what's going to be a good fit for you. And then that will change change. And, um, you know, I'm in my early fifties, so I'm just looking at what used to work in the past. It, it doesn't right now. I, I, I'm continuing to having to mm. adjust and tweak things and, um, and figure out what, you know, the good quantity is and the right balance and, you know, the, the right poses, um, that, that work with my body and some don't that used to, and things just change, you know, and that's not a bad thing. It just is a thing. And, um, I've just been really kind of like aware of that more. Maybe I've just had more time to, you know, with the, the COVID shutdown and, you know, teaching from yeah. home and, and, and just kind of been able to sort of, uh, focus on my own personal practice a little bit more. I loved watching so, you and McKenna. It's different. Oh, yes. It that was, was so fun. That much was fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> we I did have, a lot of yoga. We I have a funny did. story, though, that I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to remember this, but you invited me to a hot yoga Oh, class did I? Was. A Bikram's class. Yeah. I was doing And I that, remember I was doing going in while. and I met you there. Mm -hmm. And it was my, I'd never, mm -hmm. I didn't know what mm -hmm. I was doing. Yeah. Right? I walk in, but I know I was terrified because uh -huh. this instructor said, whatever you do, don't leave yes, the room in the middle the of mm -hmm. this session. 90 minutes. Yeah. And yes. I, I don't know how I did it. A little panic I don't, attack. I, yeah. I did. I yeah. had a mini panic yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Right. But and you know, that's a good example because I was doing Bikrams for a long time, loving it, addicted stuff. to it, going through their packages, <laughs> you know, and, and now I can't even do it. Oh. It gives, it gives me a headache. I, I, it's just not a good fit for me right now. Yeah. Um, not that it's, I, 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 my students will do it. They'll talk to me about it. I've got the experience. I did a lot of it. So I get it. But just, just it's not right for everybody at every time. I took him too. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. They didn't oh. let him. He had his bad knees. There's and, nothing oh, wrong. They weren't modifying his, <laughs> his I need poses. yoga. I, I was I like, love oh, this isn't I a love good fit for yoga. you. I love the hot heat. yoga. He loves the heat. I but love the, it. There isn't a but there's nothing worse than having a militant <laughs> yoga instructor. Oh, I know, right? Like, I no. love yoga. I love I hot yoga. That's why I'm like, okay, I need more hot yoga. But that was my 40th birthday. all about having the right instructor. Can I get an amen? Anybody? Practice. <laughs> when I was so anyway, it's just it's just there's such yeah, a won't. variety of experiences that you could have. So <laughs> okay, uh, just a couple more questions, you guys. Um, you've been married for 20 years plus. You have had faith, fitness, and key cornerstones in your relationship. How does faith influence fitness, and fitness influence faith? Hmm, that's a you good question. Go I pray a lot when I work out. I hmm. definitely I pray a lot when I do yoga. Hmm. Um, I, you know, a lot of times people will say, you know, oh, I'm Christian. I can't do yoga. And I'm like, oh, really? We aren't allowed to do yes. yoga. Shoot, I, I screwed that up. I'm that. like I'm praying. praying. I'm doing all sorts of prayers it's definitely old school to talk. Jesus and my yoga practice and Shavasana is all about praying, Amen, right? prayer time. So I think, um, you know, I, I just blend everything. I, I mm. love to get a lot for my time and my bang for my buck. And I... 
Hmm. You know, I do. I pray during my walks. I have one of my best friends, uh, Wendy Ansley. Oh, I love Wendy. And she is just like Hmm. this rosary. She Hmm. says so many rosaries in her life. And she kind of got me turned on to doing rosaries on my walks with the dog if I'm walking by myself. And I love that. And, Hmm. And then it was so cool. The other day I'm walking and there was a rosary on my path, not one of mine. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so crazy. So it was just a wow. fun sign. But um, I think you just you just blend it all. Mm. You know, it's just that's when you're going to do more of it. And um, it's going to you know, it's just it's you know, my goodness, mm. it's not about now just being super fit and mm-hmm. being, you know, just the fitness is great. And I, I'm super, you know, obviously committed to that. But it's, I'm definitely working out for my brain and yeah. my mood. And my <laughs> Amen to that. You know, more, more than yeah. anything at yeah. this point in my life. Yeah. And I think the, the, the confluence of fitness and faith is interesting because I come from a different angle when I think about the body, mind, and, and soul or spirit all working together. They obviously do. But 2021 has been an interesting year for me from a fitness perspective because um, I just shared this in the impact talk on the 20, November 20th um, and at, at a mastermind retreat is I've probably had the most challenging uh, year fitness wise because of my back flare up and where I'm at with my back. Um, when, when, when you are injured or you're hurt and you can't work out the way you want, it affects you mm-hmm. mentally mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, sure. and it affects you spiritually. Mm-hmm. When I say spiritually, you're, you're asking yourself, God, why, why now? Why, why me? Why this? Why are you using my, you know, why, why is the back so flared up and I'm going to eventually need a surgery on this? And like, it was a very interesting relationship between fitness and, and faith, uh, this year. Yeah. Ultimately, it, you, you're, you need to lean in on your faith, faith. And I think that's one of the reasons why right now, from a faith standpoint, why I've probably amped up my faith even more so because, um, of just, I realize I, I have not been training at the level that I really want to. Not that I, I can't, I, I can't train at the level I want to in the intensity I want to um the point I was making in the in the impact talk was was uh called broken or blessed broken or blessed is um in some ways physically with a back right now that is quote broken um I've worked around that in a very interesting way since February 2021 um and uh, although broken in that way, in so many ways, I feel blessed. So many ways I feel so blessed. Mm-hmm. And I've been creative. And um, I obviously am able to, to work out now. Again, I'm not doing anything near what I want to. I will eventually. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the broken or blessed, I realized that when you are broken, physically broken, and can't work out the way you want to, you need to lean on your faith and you need to make sure that when you're walking or when you're jogging or running, if you can, or doing your elliptical, whatever it is, or when you're lifting weights, which I obviously still love to do, that you are uh, praying. There's not a better time to to use prayer than when you're actually out in nature, you're hiking. Uh, we did a hike here recently at Cal's Mountain and felt so blessed to be able to do that. Um, so for me, it's a little di- different, a little deeper, but uh, the broken or blessed mentality for me is I'm always coming back to gratitude is, man, right now to be able to go out for a, a 30, 40, you know, well, you plus did minute hike. walk. I that did a hike. Was, that hike. I was felt great. so that was, yeah. grateful that I was able to do that because there was times mm-hmm. several months ago, I'm like, I just want to be able to walk around the block because my back is so flared up Pain that I need to get around thing. this. And I, I've shared some of this uh, here over the past year of some flare ups I've had and some things, but it's always a way when you think about this and you've heard me say it about motion is lotion and movement is medicine. I move now because it's medicinal. And and when I move, there's a a biochemical reaction that happens in my brain that does get your mind right. And it's necessary because when when not moving, the brain is a dangerous thing. The mind Mm -hmm. is a dangerous Mm -hmm. thing. And it's depressing when you can't um, move at the level you want to or expect yourself to on that. And um, yeah, that's just an interesting question that you had, Julie, because I say broken or blessed. Uh, I could come from a place of being broken, but I continue to choose that I am blessed and that uh, I'm going to stay in that lane of of being blessed. Mm, deep stuff. Okay, last question. 
Mel, I'm going to start with you. Who is Melanie Durkin? Ooh. Wow. Deep, um, deep. I know. Who is I Melanie have... Durkin? Can I answer that? <laughs> no. You are not. Can I answer asked. the question? Who is Melanie? No, but I can. <laughs> All right. No. Well, well, it reminds me of the I am meditation yeah. that I do a lot. If we did it in mm. our 21 day of days of meditation, um, where, you know, I am a wife, I am a mother, I am a daughter, I am a sister, I am a friend, I'm a teacher. Um, and I, you know, I am honest and I am kind and mm. compassionate and, um, and I think I, I have a lot of love to spread and, and share and give. And I'm definitely a giver. Mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable giving than receiving. <laughs> um, so I, I think I'm just try to do the best that I can at all of those mm. different roles. You left a few areas. things out. You're beautiful. Oh, you're, you're so an incredible sweet. cook. <laughs> you're an incredible Preach. mother. Preach. Yes. Preach. Incredible mother. Preach. Incredible oh, wife. Thank you. Incredible support. Amen. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You are. I just try to do the best job that I can in all of those areas. And and I love being all of those, you know, having yeah. all of those roles. And, mm. and the last one I so. have to add is you're fun. Mm. Your laughter <laughs> is infectious. Yes. It's yes. so true. Like, I love true. when you laugh. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. Yeah. smile. Thank you. Yeah, the smile. Million dollar smile. Okay, TD, you're up. Who's Todd Durkin? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard to define. We talked about right? that, right? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Hard to define. Uh, I'll answer it two ways. And, and the first one, I guess I'm kind of getting deep today. Um, but it, I guess the first one would be, uh, I've shared this before on, on previous episodes, but I do have a tombstone statement and a tombstone statement is if you were to take three to five words to define yourself in your life, you know, what's on that tombstone statement. And for me, it's father, husband, leader, coach, life transformer, a man who created impact. So that, that probably epitomizes, um, that, but. If I use the I am as, as Melanie, which I, I, is a great exercise, by the way, is whether you're meditating, you write it down. I am a father, a husband, a trainer, a coach, a leader, and life transformer who is committed to inspiring and motivating people to be the best that they could possibly be. I mean, for me, that that's important. Um, I'd also say that I'm a man of faith who serves God's mission uh, to make this world a better place to be. I think at the end of the day, that's that's what I want to hear is well done, good and faithful servant. And um, lastly, and most importantly, I am a man of impact. You are. You are. And you're fun and cute too. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. yeah, we better end the show. Oh gosh, here we go. The and you're belt. so committed. He's so committed. You are you have great commitment and loyal, and disloyal, yes. and disciplined wow, like in a good retrievers. way. Wow, like in, yeah. in a good way. Yeah, you're yeah. such a golden retriever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you guys, and this such has a good been role model. so fun. Go on and on. You've been a great host, <laughs> Thank Julie. You've so been a great host. Julie, you, you are awesome. This... I think you should host more. Oh, wow. <laughs> but she, she's just a natural. No, let's get Mel to host. <laughs> she is. Oh, maybe. Oh. Maybe someday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, or we, maybe we'll do a way cooking up. show. We'll do something yes. fun. Um, well, thanks, you guys, so much. And thanks for letting me be a part of such a special episode. Yeah. Thank thanks, you, Julie. Julie. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff. Love you guys. Well, that sure was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. I'm back in the captain's seat. Julie did an amazing job. Thank you, Julie Wilcox. Uh, she wears a lot of hats, and and we're adding host of the, the podcast today uh, to that role. And always, always great to have Melanie uh, in the house. Feel so grateful to have her uh, by my side in all I do. And you can see how she makes me better in so many ways. Uh, do me a favor if you can. Number one, please share this episode. It's important that we get this message out there so we could spread the positive light and the impact uh, globally. Also, I know many of you have probably already done this, but if you are new to the show, uh, five-star ratings on iTunes and reviews really help. I haven't asked in a while, so if by chance you 
you happen to forget to do that a while back, please hop over there. Give us a five-star rating and a great review on the Todd Durkin Impact Show. Uh, when you do that, that boosts our rankings up and allows more and more people to see uh, the Impact Show. So uh, please help us out today in this Thanksgiving and, and Christmas and Hanukkah holiday season. Uh, please uh, help us out by doing that. Without further ado, have an incredible rest of your day. And uh, remember today, go out there and train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact.